That game was that was a okay game. I must say. Some of the other games from like the opening weekend. Um, Sunday, you had the Connecticut Sun versus the Minnesota Lynx. Um, it was a good game. Big Seal, Ben Sylvia Files, Broke, Rebecca Bronson's uh, WNBA rebounding record. It was it was great, and it was amazing because now Rebecca Bronson is one of the assistant coaches for is one of the assistant coaches for the Minnesota Lynx. So that's even better. So once she broke the record, Bronson uh, Rebecca Bronson was right there to basically get the ball and get it, hold on to it to mark the the occasion. They stopped the game and. The um, it was great. It was great. Also, we got to mention uh, Crystal Dangerfield. Crystal Dangerfield out of UConn. She made her WNBA debut. Now, I said that Crystal Dangerfield should have been a uh, first round pick. And I think the only reason she wasn't a first round pick is because of her height. I think Crystal Dangerfield's maybe maybe a five, six, five, seven. But she runs the team. She knows how to get the ball to everybody. She knows how to get her shot. Like she's quick and she's strong. Like she got the guns. Like her debut was good. Like I can see that Cheryl Reeves believes in what she got in her as a second-round pick. And I think, and I'm going to say this now, I think that Crystal Dangerfield could possibly crack their starting lineup at some point. Yes, I'm saying it. Crystal Dangerfield could possibly crack the Minnesota Lynx starting five at some point. Um, also, you had the rematch of the finals last year, being the Chicago Sky and the Las Vegas Aces. Um, the Chicago Sky won by two points, I think 88 to, 80, 88 to 86. And they won with uh, a, a Courtney Vandersloot assist to her wife. Ali quickly for three with a couple of seconds left in the game, and that's how they won. So they're one and zero in the matchup of the rematch of the finals. Um, then you you also had the Wings in the Dream, the Dallas Wings versus the Atlanta Dream. That was a interesting game. I'm gonna say I watched the game specifically to watch Kennedy Carter make her Atlanta Dream debut. Also to see 
Ty Harris out of South Carolina make her Dallas Wings debut alongside of um, Satu Sabli. Let's see the debuts. Um, Kennedy Carter basically gave the fans and everybody what they expected of her and her debut. I think she had like 18 and 8. And it was a lot of chatter because everybody wants to say she just she just shoot the ball, she'll pass the ball. I don't think it's too much chatter now because she had eight assists. Yeah, yeah. Eight assists. How do you have eight assists for a player that they say don't pass the ball? But overall for the opening weekend of the WBA, I was satisfied in what I saw. Um, I wanted to see Kiki Herbert Hurricane make her debut the opening weekend. It didn't happen in the first game. Um, I think in their second game, Kiki finally made her debut in a game that they, uh, the Minnesota Lynx were losing, and also they lost Karina Christmas Kelly for the rest of the season to a ruptured um, Achilles, I believe it is. So prayers up to her and a speedy recovery. She worked so hard to come back from the last injury she had. But like I said, overall, I was satisfied with the opening weekend games and oh also I gotta mention the Las Vegas Aces they got Andrew McCultry in their starting lineup like Andrew McCultry hasn't played basketball I want to say in a good two years and came in the starting lineup for the Aces like nothing happened like she was never injured like she's a bucket like, that is a different dynamic to go along in their starting five with no Kelsey Plum due to, um, I think, a torn Achilles and also no Liz Cambage due to medical opting out. So, I think the dynamic of Kayla McBride and Angel McCultry and now... Asia, Asia Wilson basically been the focal point of their starting lineup. It's just amazing. Angel is a bucket. Angel McCarthy is, is a walking bucket. She came out, I think, and scored 25 as if, as if she'd been in the gym the whole time. I ain't skipped a beat, nothing. So, overall, the I think it was six games in the opening weekend of Saturday and Sunday. And I was, I was impressed from what I saw. All the superstars that came back. That came back and um, showed people that they missed a step to the superstars that are now on new teams basically working to figure it out how they how they're gonna contribute on their new teams to the hype of Sabrina UNESCO to Hollywood Kennedy Carter to Satu Sabali to um Christy Dangerfield and a lot of the other rookies that made their debuts I was satisfied with the six games like I'm rocking I'm rocking with my Washington Mystics all the way though A Ariel Powell Ariel Ariel Powers and Ariel Atkins and Maisha Hines Allen like they gonna lead us we 2-0 right now without EDD and Tina Charles. So, all the chatter, it, like, I'm here for it. They 2-0 and without them. Like, everybody thought that the message wasn't going to be nothing without EDD. 
and uh, Christy Tolliver leaving. Like, they're 2-0. 2-0, people are stepping up. Like, I don't have too much more to say. This is just my overview of the opening weekend of the WNBA. I was happy with everything I saw, all the games and everything. Also, the players showing respect with the Sayer name and the custom shoes and the 26 seconds of uh, remembrance for Breonna Taylor. But before the games, that was amazing. They reached out to her family. So, yeah, WNBA opening weekend was a success. So, we about to put a wrap on episode three, the WNBA season opening weekend. And, again, shout out my sponsor, the Anchor app. The easiest way to get your podcast done. And shout out also Spotify. Spotify, if you want a, another listening platform to listen to the podcast. So, until next time, this is your girl, Miss J, signing out. Until the next episode of Talks with J, Views of the Sagittarius, we out. This is just the beginning. <laughs>